Hello, what is rule 184? It's a movement rule for a cellular automaton. You should know what that is. For this video, these are our cells and we pretend that we are simulating some cars moving and every one is a car and every zero is not a car. So every zero is a free space. This is how our street looks like. It's a circular street. So when you finish here, you end up here. Okay, but what's the movement rule? If you check Wikipedia, you will find something like this. What does this tell us? It tells us when you have the current cell and the next cell and the previous cell, then this is the the value of the new cell. Oh, by the way, we should make proper ones. Okay, let's follow this rule. I think everything gets clear then. Let's start with this one. This is the current cell we're looking at and we have the pattern 110. So we check for the pattern 110 is this one. So then this cell will become zero in the next step. Okay, and next we check this cell and we have the pattern 100. We check 100, it's this one. So this one will become one and so on and so forth. We check all of them. And as I said, this is a circular road. So if we check this one, then this is the previous cell. This is the current cell and this is the next cell. So we search for the pattern 101, which is this one. So we end up with a one. And same goes for this one. We have the previous cell of zero and the next cell of one. So we have a pattern of one, uh, sorry, zero, one, one, which is this one. So we write uh, one. And if we now say this was at time, let's say at time zero, then this is our situation at time one. So this is how our cells look like at time one. This is how our cells looked like at time zero. Okay, I hope it's clear how to use this thing. Actually, you should be prepared to do all your practices in school and university, but just for the sake of completeness, for a little completeness, let's think about the semantic stuff that happened here. If we think of these as cars, then we just simulated that a car can only move if there's a free space in front of the car, because if you check it out, then you see that these two cars, these two, sorry, these two ones moved one field, whereas this one did not have a free space in front, so it couldn't move. And this one and this one, neither. They didn't have a free spot in the front, so they couldn't move. But from this, you know that in the next, so in the, at time two, you will know that this was able to move and this car was also able to move and this car was also able to move. However, this car could not move and this car could also not move because this car had this one in front and this car had this car in front. Also note that with this rule, you can only jump or a car can only move one space at a time. So we cannot jump from here to here. Even if this is free, we cannot jump two fields. And we also don't have any acceleration or deceleration process. That means we either move one or we don't move at all. There's no in between. There is no, we're going faster over time just these speeds. If you are a little bit unsatisfied with these rules that you can only move one, for example, then you should check out the Fukui Ishibashi model. This will give you more fields to jump. However, as I basically just said, it's jumping, so you don't have acceleration or deceleration. If you want excellent deceleration, you should check out the Nagel Schreckenberg model or Nagel, I'm not sure about the English pronunciation here. This will allow for acceleration and deceleration. And last but not least, why is this called rule 184? Because if you take these numbers and interpret them as a binary number and then convert them to decimal, well, let's write a proper one here, then you get the number 184. Okay, that's it.